Maserati. Wait a minute. That's not my car. Nope. Nope. Ah, there she is. Hiding around the corner. Classic. Welcome back to the vlog, guys. Welcome back to the Tesla. Ah, it's always a good day when you're back in the Tesla. Unfortunately, my window uh, still does not work. Um, yes, I have a service appointment scheduled in two days. Um, but I don't know if you can really see in here. It's a little dark, but yeah, if I push the buttons, nothing happens. So anyways, that's nothing new, nothing new. But welcome back to Tesla Talk Tuesday. It is Tuesday. We're going to talk kind of Tesla, kind of some other things too. But let's get out of the garage because it's really dark down here. And I'm also late for work, so let's roll. <laughs> trying to race not really sure but easily haven't beat obviously I mean I don't even see him anywhere it's, it's, it's nice when you're in a Tesla whoa look at this demolition goodness gracious welcome back to Tesla talk Tuesday so we're just gonna start off with the fact that Tesla sales grew 40% in China this year that's pretty impressive Granted, they haven't even finished the uh, Shanghai Gigafactory. Apparently, there's some issues with like getting permits to either build, probably build or like sell from building. In China. I don't know. There's some weird permits around something in China. I'll probably just pop it up on the screen to say exactly what it is, like right here. But um, yeah, anyways, the sales in China have still grown by 40%. And that's even with the increased pricing that people pay because, well, Tesla's been obviously importing Teslas from the United States, which is where their main production facilities are. But going forward, it'll be interested to see how much more sales can grow in China because, well, the cars will be that much cheaper since they're actually being made there once the Shanghai Gigafactory is actually completed. Now, apparently, Teslas are not the only cars that catch on fire or explode. Sorry, sorry, let me caveat that. They're not the only electric cars that catch on fire or explode. Obviously, plenty of gas cars catch on fire. They can also explode. You just don't hear about it in the news. But it is true, uh, Hyundai Kona, uh, they're also fully electric vehicles, uh, I guess exploded in a man's garage in, I think somewhere up in Canada. So uh, this explosion actually blew the garage door clean off and definitely could have caused some serious injuries if somebody was nearby. Now what's interesting is the car was apparently not plugged in or charging. So the car was just parked in the man's garage, not, not plugged in, not running, nothing like that. So it is interesting that it happened. I'm sure Hyundai will launch a full investigation into it, figure out what it is. Hopefully we'll get some answers because I'm always curious what the causes are. Like why, why would an electric car randomly explode? Is it, a, is it a problem with the battery packs? Is it a problem with battery packs that are used in more than just the Hyundai Konas? Um, it's, it's just ways to obviously make these cars safer going forward and I wouldn't want my Tesla exploding or catching on fire ever. So yeah, good thing everybody's okay. Hopefully it doesn't happen to any other cars, but there was also those crazy heat waves the last like week or two, uh, 90s, hundreds, just very, very high temperatures and humidity. So uh, maybe that could have been part of the cause. Anyways, you know, they should obviously be manufactured safe enough. So just heat doesn't cause that to happen. Now, Elon Musk has been active on Twitter as always. And uh, well, it looks like software version 10 is going to be released soon. My understanding is that version 10 is supposed to, ooh, ooh, ooh we have a little uh, DB9 action here. Hey, hey, yo, ooh, ooh, okay, all right. Very nice, looking sharp, looking good. Um, yes, so version 10 is supposed to be coming out. Um, more games, uh, better autopilot features as far as like recognizing, I think like uh, red lights, stop signals. Uh, what else is there? Oh, we got some streaming video. So you might be able to watch like YouTube and Netflix soon. I assume it's just gonna be like, oh, the car has to be in park, um, which will be nice features to have, especially for when you're supercharging, for example. You know, if you're not going in and eating or walking around or something, if you're just gonna sit there for the 20, 30 minutes, 
you know, not bad if you can just like pull up YouTube, you know, watch a Cars and Kyle vlog, you know, just the usual. Someone apparently tweeted at Elon about getting like a quick reply kind of thing to text message feature, I guess similar to what you can do with Siri and stuff right now. But Elon did say that that would be coming out in version 10 as well at some point. So that'll be pretty nice to have. Uh, just because, well, there is no Apple CarPlay or anything like that. I'm assuming it's licensed and Tesla obviously doesn't want to pay for it in order to use it. It would be nice to have, but really just any sort of phone integration where you can do a quick reply would be a pretty nice feature. But point being, keep a lookout for software version 10 should be rolling out soon. Some streaming videos, potentially more games. They had like a pretty cool ad for uh, adding chess to the cars. And um, yeah, some, some further enhanced autopilot or full self-driving kind of capabilities. Uh, just making autopilot on the highway and like traffic light recognition that much better. So cool improvements that they can just roll out with software over the air updates because of these cool computers and the high tech in these cars. Tesla has recently come out and said that the number one, the number one reason why people go to service centers is to learn how to use autopilot, which is pretty funny. So interestingly enough, I guess if you don't test drive a Model 3 before you buy it, you have seven days in order to, re to return the vehicle, get a full refund, all of that jazz. So I, I kind of get it why you may not want to test drive it, just get the car and have it for a full week rather than get like a you know, 20, 30 minute test drive. So, you know, you kind of get, you sort of see the lifestyle of having an electric car, having to make sure it's charged, all of that stuff, which really isn't that big of a deal. Um, but it is interesting and also good. I'd rather people know how to use it properly than improperly use it and then be getting into accidents. Also, please make sure you guys are paying attention when you're using full set or uh, autopilot, whatever you want to call it right now, enhanced autopilot. I don't know what the technical term right now is. It is not fully autonomous yet. So please, please, please pay attention. That is the biggest thing. When I had my loaner car, I believe it was only autopilot one, but I knew that it had lots of limitations. Um, I knew that it wouldn't stop for stoplights, but even, even if I didn't or wasn't sure, my foot was over that brake, ready to stop for, for stoplights or anything like that. Now, if there was a vehicle in front of me at a stoplight, it would obviously come to a stop because it could detect that vehicle but autopilot one cannot read stoplights. So make sure you know the limitations of autopilot and you do not push it beyond its boundaries unless you're in a safe place and you're not gonna hurt anybody or yourself even. So just, just please do that, but keep going to the service centers, keep learning how to use autopilot because that's definitely very important if you're gonna be using that feature. Anywho, we are rolling into work. Obviously my window's still not working, so this is gonna be awkward. Here we go, here we go, come on. Big money, no whammies. Yes. All right, there we go. All right, well, we're heading into work, so two -ish seconds, one. All right, finally off work. You have the ticket prepaid to make sure that when I have to open my door, because, well, we all know that my window won't go down over here. Well, the window's not broken itself, it's just the, the switch panel, but um, I, I just don't want to hold people up, even though I probably will. Anyways, um, yeah, let's go. Let's go pay. Nice uh, white Model 3 right here. There we go. Okay. Got the uh, blue Model S right there. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the uh, the Model X. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, another uh, silver Model X. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, preemptive on buckle. It's, 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 it's tough right now, guys, it's tough, but only like a day or two left. There is someone behind me. This is a little awkward, a little embarrassing. But, uh... All right, all right, all right, we're good. We're good, we're good. A little embarrassed, a little embarrassed. Oh, jeez, I mean, it's awkward, right? Like, I don't want to give Tesla a bad name, because I absolutely love the cars, but which is not working and it's been like two weeks now three weeks now we're going on it's it's basically been a long time and a little bit of an inconvenience at least we got the fun acceleration that's that's always a bonus anywho back to uh some tesla talk tuesday stuff so apparently the porsche Taycan has already taken thirty thousand reservations uh i think that's what they're supposed to like have capacity to build this year so i don't know if they're going to increase that capacity or just take on more reservations 
but either way, if they fulfill those 30,000, I think there was talk of them bumping the capacity to like 40,000 of, of uh, potential available units. Um, if that's the case, they might outsell the 911. They're like a flagship, you know, well-known car. I think the 911, they do like 35, 36,000 units a year. So that's pretty impressive. <clears throat> so today as I was uh, on the internet, I saw a sponsored ad for, I think it was a car and driver article that said, the 2022 BMW i4 could be some real competition for the Model 3. Now, in my head, I'm already thinking, how are you comparing a concept car that isn't mass produced, isn't yet available, and isn't going to be available for at least, so I think two years. So it's a 2022 model that should be available in 2021. I just, I, I, I really didn't get it. When you start reading the article, it almost makes even less sense. So they're comparing the i4, which is uh, BMW's, I guess, gonna be their uh, like mid-market kind of uh, fully electric car. It's gonna be built on top of the three slash four series platform. Uh, it said it's gonna have a starting price around $50,000 and it's gonna have a range of 350 miles. Now they're saying that this is gonna be some real competition for the Model 3, which is already out. And if you look at that car, well, it starts at under $40,000 in the $30,000 range. It has a range of 310 miles, which, okay, let's say price goes up anyways. Uh, it's going to be in the $40,000 range for probably a long range model uh, that gets you 310 miles today. Tesla also already has a car on the market that does 370 miles. Granted, that car starts at $80,000, but point being is they have the battery technology, the efficiencies and all that stuff. So in two years, you don't think that Tesla's going to already be able to increase their range from 310 to 350 miles? I mean, that, that seems like a joke, right? So I just don't understand this article about like a, a, a car that hasn't even come out from BMW saying it's going to cause real competition for the Model 3. I mean, the way I see it is there's going to be no competition from this car if the BMW maintains current stats that they're giving in this article, I think the Model 3 is gonna crush it in two years because the efficiencies, the battery technology, the cost, they're just gonna keep coming down and keep improving on the Model 3. And if that's really all BMW is gonna offer in, in, in uh, two years, I mean, it's great, right? Don't get me wrong, it's nice to have options, other cars that will be on the market over uh, 300 miles of range, all that jazz, but starting at 50 grand, I mean, if you can get into a Model 3 performance for 54, 55,000, I would do that all day over any i4, whatever you want to call it, BMW. Plus, you have the supercharging network. Uh, Tesla has all these over-the-air software updates. They have full self-driving capabilities. I don't think BMW is anywhere near close to that stuff, but who knows? I mean, it's two years away. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. The article's getting ahead of itself, but it's, it's just, it's interesting to see these articles come out saying like, oh, real Model 3 competition two years from now and they're comparing it to the current model. It, anyways, that's, it's just something interesting, but either way, yes, the i4 is supposedly supposed to come out in about two years. Now, last but not least, we're getting up there, guys. We got 95,684 miles. So yes, less than 5,000 miles before my warranty is up. I figure I'm probably gonna hit 100,000 miles before it's either 100,000 miles or February of 2020. And I figure I'm gonna do another 4,400 miles by then. So um, I need to start figuring out what I'm gonna do. Now, I, I've gotten some comments uh, asking about what am I gonna do? And I thought I could extend the warranty. However, someone did bring up a good point. I think that extended warranty option might only be available to people that bought their cars new. Meaning once you hit like the four year 50,000 mile uh, warranty expiration, you can then extend the warranty another four years, 50,000 miles, effectively to 100,000 miles. But at that point, I don't know if Tesla offers another warranty option. So that is the question of the day. Uh, when I go to the service center this Thursday in two days, I will be asking them if there are any options as far as warranties. Otherwise, I would have to look at third-party warranties. And well, if those are too expensive or just not worth it, then it's, do I trade in my Tesla for another Tesla? Do I sell my car and get like a used Lamborghini or something else fun? 
I just, I do, I do really like the idea of having a Tesla. You don't pay for gas. You get insane performance. The question is, do I get like a Model 3 performance? Do I get a used Model 3? Do I get a used Model S like P100D with ludicrous mode? Do I get a newer one and finance it? Like, I, there's, there's so many options out there. I just don't really know what to do. The problem is that these cars do take a real price hit uh, once, once you get them. I mean, this car was over, what, probably a hundred and close to $115,000, $120,000 brand new uh, when it came out. I might be able to get thirty grand for it now. So, you know, I mean, granted, it's been five years on 100,000 miles, but you can easily see the price depreciation on these cars. So... That's that's like the one issue I have with getting a uh, new or new-ish P100D with ludicrous mode. I'm easily gonna lose 50, 60, 70 grand on that car. So um, that's that's where I do hesitate hesitate a little bit. So like maybe I'd go for like a slightly higher mileage one, but I just don't know what I'm gonna find. So I, I, I haven't really started looking, but um, I just don't really know what else. And right now there's really no other feasible electric cars that I I would like or want necessarily um, I just I like the idea of having the Tesla supercharger network granted there are other um, chargers out there now and if I do buy a used or new Tesla at this point I will not be grandfathered into free unlimited supercharging but yeah I, it's, it's, there's 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 a lot of things to uh, to consider and and I, I still think I do really like Tesla I mean they have autopilot capabilities which a lot of cars other a lot of other cars don't really have the same capabilities that Tesla has right now and I do really think that they are very far ahead in in those options plus I absolutely love absolutely love this interior of the uh, the model s um, I know the model 3 is obviously quite different with the single touchscreen but I'm sure I get used to it however I do really like really like the center touchscreen and the setup the tractable handles the car looks fantastic um, and it would be a lot of fun and plus if you can get the P100D with ludicrous mode you're getting pretty much the fastest uh, or the sorry the quickest the quickest production car on the market um, there's really nothing else that even competes as far as quickness uh, so it's they're just they're great cars the driving is fantastic they handle very well even for being a large car and heavy they uh, they really move so um, you know it definitely throws you back when you accelerate in this car I, I've test driven a P100D once and it was absolutely incredible so uh, there's a lot of options to weigh I gotta kind of look at the finances and see what's going on but um, we do have a couple thousand more miles so we'll have some more fun with this car um, and then maybe we'll keep it, maybe we won't. So more to come on that, but uh, definitely stay tuned. The wrap, I am in the process of cutting up right now, so stay tuned for that as well. And Tesla Service Center on Thursday. I hope there's like not something like weird going on with my car, because originally I had a mobile appointment, then they were like, you need to come in for further diagnosis. And I was like, that's really weird. So I guess we'll see on, on Thursday. I, I literally hope it's just like replacing that panel. Like that's all, sh all it should be. It's just this thing, like they should just replace this and I should be good. But we'll see. So more to come. But if you guys are enjoying the content, please, please like and subscribe. The little button down there, subscribe. Anyways, that'll be it for today. So thanks for watching.